Oh, that's the wrong one. There we go. Hey. <clears throat> Hello, folks. How you doing? Uh, Drum Tech here. Let me just make sure that my... Yes, we are good. Okay, good. Hey. <laughs> Yo. Hey, What's welcome. Up? So, I got my friends here. I got Durst the Worst. I got Robert Noir. Uh, and as many of you may or may not know, the, VODs, uh, the Vox Adpocalypse has... Uh, happened and it's continuing to happen and Durst the worst is one of the victims unfortunately he is one of many thousands it's as it's being reported that have lost monetization uh, just like I did here a couple months ago and uh, to people who are monetized and who who make content and make money on it for months and months and months years they I mean that becomes a part of their income and uh, you know not having that and you know what I don't even know there we go I'm back sorry and not not having that income <laughs> is is a problem, you know. And and I don't know how much Durst was making or not, but I assume it, it is a problem because you, you you know it's not that money is a is a motivation for me at least to make videos, but it definitely helps, especially when you're spending hours and hours and hours to make content. You need some sort of a compensation for that, especially when YouTube is making lots of money on that on that video. Sure. Especially if sure. you're getting thousands and yeah. thousands of views. But yeah, Durst, uh, what are your feelings on it, bud? Yeah, I mean, I you know even before the huge uh, Adpocalypse 3.0, I was pretty much uh, across the board. Uh, yellow demonetized, which which is still a bummer, but you still get some degree of uh, the uh, what do you call it, the YouTube premium revenue. But now I'm just completely like nuked. I don't get any revenue at all, and it's it's kind of a bummer. Like I, I would before before the first adpocalypse, I was able to fund like a few trips here and there, and like throw the YouTube revenue alone. But now, like e even before this one, it was it was sort of rough, but. Um, right, and you do. Was, the yeah, you go out. There. You go out. So you go need out. that money. Well, the, the the motivation was there because for a while I was able to fund a trip or two just from the ad revenue, but uh, that was taken away like a year or two ago. Now it's just now like supplementing a half cost of a hotel room isn't even an option. So. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out some sort of. I mean, subscribe star. I set up a subscribe star. I just look up Durst the worst. And, I mean, yeah. you know, I'll just show. I don't really give a fuck, dude. Like everybody yeah. should just be showing like non YouTube, yeah. non Patreon platforms, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I agree, no. and uh, we will share your links and Roberts and mine as well in channel because look, folks, those of you watching. Uh, without monetization, most of, we're just doing this for free, and believe me, it, it's a lot of work, uh, especially what Durst does, what I would like to do. He inspires me to want to go out and interview people on the street and do that kind of thing. That's what he does every video. He's out there. He, he's at, he's right. you know on the beat doing it. He should get I mean, compensated dude, for that. Dude, I, uh, I, you know, one, one of the things that people are getting asked for is uh, – you know, it's really vaguely worded, hateful content, like content that directs hate toward either a race or a gender or a nationality, which I really don't think that I, uh, I, in my opinion, I don't do that, but that's just, that's just it. It's all up to this vaguely nebulously defined subjective opinion on what is hateful and what is hate yeah. speech. And they don't define it. They don't define it concretely. They don't show you which videos you violated in terms of service in. They just say that, generally speaking, your channel in and of itself is violating it. It would help if they would show the video and like give a timestamp or something. But they don't do anything like that. I would be more than happy to go through and and change. Like, I mean, not more than happy, but I would be grudgingly. 
go through and change like whatever they're talking about, but that option's not really there. So. Right. And yeah, if yeah, you email if you- them. And real quick, and Robert, I'm going to you next, but yeah, if you email them and ask them for information, what what's going on? What video is to blame or anything like that? You're going to get no response at all. You're going to get a bot response, you know, uh, a, right. a canned response that, that, that they send out to millions of people. But Robert, you know, you're not quite there yet, but you're about halfway to being able to monetize. Like, what do you think? Yeah. Are you worried that you're going to be able to or not? I would, my guess is that I will probably able to initially monetize. I think the problem is once you get to a point where you're kind of public and some of the, someone becomes aware that's one of these people that's censorious and then they report you, you're pretty good until then. But the problem yeah. is we're starting to see with the Crowder, Carlos Maza, the Vox Adpocalypse here that um, YouTube's going to listen to these left wing voices, these particularly mainstream media voices. So once you get on that radar, that's when you'll get demonetized. So I feel like that, and I feel like that's probably what happened to you as well, Jerome Tech. I feel like even when I first hit a thousand subscribers, if I monetize, I probably won't be there yet where I'm on their radar. But one of the things I was going to go off what Durst was saying was when you're talking about the vagueness that's clearly intentional they want it to be oh, yeah. as vague and as able to uh, capture so as possible i remember one time that's right i remember one time i got arrested for disorderly conduct uh, i was at a concert a little inebriated and uh i got arrested <laughs> and the cop was really cold when i got to the station and he, he basically told me i should fight it i was like yeah i didn't commit disorderly conduct he's like sure you did look at how we word the law the law is written right. so almost everyone's breaking that law every right. day. And so it's right. a catch-all. Anytime they don't like what you have to say, they just slap that on. That's exactly what you yes. do. You talk yes. about things like discriminating versus uh, you know, race and ethnicity. Here's one, here's my favorite one of the list they put out: immigration status. So, in other words, if you have a problem with illegal immigration, you are violating YouTube's terms and service because you're not allowed to comment on not in, not liking illegal immigrants being in the country. That's right. how ridiculous. Yes. It, right. It's so ideologically biased to one direction, uh, uh, and it's you know, and, and like you're saying, you're right. It's it's uh, vague and nebulous by design because they need to keep it that way so they can selfishly level these accusations at anyone that they want at their own right. selfish convenience. Right. It's a rationalization. It's a justification to silence anybody that they want to. And that's why it's so exactly like you guys said, it's so when you ask and it's funny because they don't even give you an answer anyway. But even if they did, it's so vague that you yeah, you fall under it no matter what you do. If you oppose the left, if you oppose the media or Democrats, you fall under it because they've de- redefined racism and hate and all these words to just to just be a weapon against us, basically against their political adversaries. And even though it's a different social media platform, I really recommend anyone who's interested in this, watch Joe Rogan's episode where he has Jack Dorsey and Tim Pool on at the same time. Tim Pool, oh, yeah. by the way, some not a big Trump supporter, left-wing person. Fantastic, though. He's all for free speech, and he's been very good on this. And one of the things you realize is you see that each and every time they censor someone, they're able to say, well, we could articulate, we could argue why this person violated our terms of service. That's because it's intentionally vague. The problem is just like all the other stuff we talk about, like politically, it's not that you're enforcing a set of rules. That's fine. We can all deal with that. Like Durst was saying, the problem is you selectively enforce the rules. And so that's why we can see Carlos Maza go out and suggest actually committing assault against conservative speakers to the point where they don't feel safe congregating in public. But he's the victim when someone makes a joke at him. When it comes right. Or blue check marks can threaten kids and it's cool. It's no yes. big deal, but yeah, they can right. they can do anything. Right. Yeah, dude. Yeah, you know, it's not assault to whip a drink or a rock or a bottle at somebody. Triggered snowflake conservative. I mean, it, right. again, we were talking earlier <laughs> offline, off off the call. We were talking about the gaslighting tactics that play here. It's just constant mind fuck, just tactics. Like they're trying to get us to feel like we are the crazy ones for calling right. them out for what we're doing. Like yeah, and in crazy, fact, we're crazy, thinking, we're crazy for thinking that whipping a milkshake at someone is violence. The real violence is Crowder making a lispy queer joke. Like that's the real violence. Right, right. Because if if it was done, and it, it, what's kind of amazing to me is that no, almost none of these tactics are ever turned around on them. Why is that? That's one thing I don't understand. And two, if we did then they would react completely differently. The media would react completely differently. They'd they'd make it seem so much more sinister and nefarious, you know, and, and they they most definitely would. And I feel like if we did reciprocate, oh man, they would unleash on us and that's all they would need. 
Well, that's the point, right? Like, I'm convinced that the Carlos Mazas of the world and these other people, and you can see this all throughout the progressive left, the establishment, uh, the people with power at least, is they in, they know what they're doing. This is pre-planned and they enjoy a victimhood status. That has to do with this cultural Marxism that they advocate. And so what's the best way to look like a victim? Like, let's take Don Lemon. I don't know if you saw this article, but Don Lemon might quit because uh, he's been getting harassment. I've watched videos where Don Lemon has guests on saying everyone who supports Trump is a bigot, a racist, and right. retarded, one-toothed redneck. Now, Don Lemon puts that on and laughs about it, right? But then he's the victim when one of those people are like, hey, shut up. Oh, now all of a sudden they're being... And that's exactly what happens. They want a reaction. They want you to react with vitriol or with anger. And then they can say, ah, see, you're the problem. So Carlos Maza could say, you should be censored. You should have to shut up. You're a bigot. You're a racist. I hate white people. We should throw milkshakes at you. And when you say, hey, shut your mouth, loser. Oh, now all of a sudden you're a harasser. And that's exactly oh. what their game is. That's why demonstrating absurdity by being absurd just doesn't work with them. It doesn't. <laughs> Unfortunately, like because they don't, it doesn't even like enter their heads for some reason. And I think, like, yeah, yeah, I mean, like that's why uh, you got to demonstrate the absurdity with their absurdity in the eyes of people that are in the middle mass. You know what I mean? People that are either center left, center right, right. Or moderate, or whatever, whatever you want to call it. People who are uninitiated. You got to you got to right. demonstrate to them how absurd it is by just objectively documenting it. And that's why, <laughs> again, like. People like me, yeah. people like Tim Pool. I'm surprised Tim Pool hasn't. Well, uh, you know, or people, people. Uh, I, I guess a lot of these other guys that were on the ground, uh, you know, live streamers aren't really as active anymore. But uh, people like yeah. them, if they still are, if they still are, like they, they have no hope of being monetized because what they do is just that. They, what they do is threatening to the corporate media. Like yeah, I mean, it, it demonstrates how absurd the Don Lennons and the Mazas are. Um, right. And they, they're just not having it. It's ridiculous. No, and, and some, you know, just to demonstrate that, I did want to show, I, I linked the uh, New York Times article for everybody earlier, but I did want to put it up here and just sort of show it. I mean, look at this collage that's behind the article and how they how they begin the article so dramatically. Like Caleb Kane was a college dropout looking for direction. <laughs> He turned to YouTube. Oh, yeah. Soon he, he was pulled into down. far right universe, watching thousands of videos filled with conspiracy theories, misogyny, and racism. Like it's so. Re I was brainwashed. So, and there is no right wing. It's all. It's like just far right. Well, they conflate right wing and far right quite a bit. In fact, I searched the article, and I'll do it right now. You look for far right. Um, if I can do it here, yeah, far right. Far right, 22 times. Let's try far left. Oh, zero times. Why am I not surprised? But this article, I just want to read just a little bit at the beginning of this article. I bought it the day after I got it. After I got death threats, he said. The threats, Mr. Kane explained, came from right-wing trolls in response to a video he had posted on YouTube a few days earlier. In the video, he told the story of how, as a liberal college dropout, struggling to find his place in the world, he had gotten sucked into a vortex of far-right politics on YouTube. And then basically... I, I fell down the alt-right rabbit hole. They basically conflate anybody on on YouTube that is right of Mao Zedong. And, you know, they're a, conspir a, a wacky, crazy conspiracy theorist nut job that shouldn't be listened to. And they definitely make it seem like left-wing is salvation. Like, at the end, they're like, right. he, fin he finally started watching left-wing videos. How insane is right. that? <laughs> So, so what is, what exactly do they do they go into depth about what the conspiracy theories are? Is it a conspiracy theory to point out that a lot of college campuses have oh, this no. anti that, like that, that, that gender way, like the gender gap anti white guy bent is that yeah stuff yeah stuff like that and even the gender gap they include in that so it's like it's, I mean okay, the gender now. gap. The wage gender gap at the very least is debatable, but they act like it's settled ah. science or something. Well, it, it's settled science in that they are wrong about it. Like, right. That, that I mean, it's pretty settled. Yeah. But and that's the yeah. trick, though, right? Like, that, first off, as someone who would have called myself, I would still call myself in some extent as a 
conspiracy theorists. That's always the trick, right? You take an extreme example and then lump in something. So for example, you might say, I'm a conspiracy theorist and that I feel that we shouldn't have bombed Syria because I'm not convinced Assad gassed his own people. Yeah. And people will say, oh, a conspiracy theorist, you know, like that, or the people that believe we didn't land on the moon or believe in flat earth or believe that kids didn't get killed in, uh, you know, that mass. Exactly. That's the trick. Yeah. And that's, that's one small danger of this type of rhetoric and censorship is it, once you start to say, hey, uh, you have to accept the prevailing sentiment of every government account of anything that's ever happened. And if not, you're a dangerous conspiracy theorist. Well, in other words, that's just the default way of saying you can't criticize government or you can't criticize power. Uh, other people that were conspiracy theorists were like, you know, all the people that were talking about the atrocities that were going on in the Vietnam War. Then we learned about it because a bunch of left wing journalists got access to the Pentagon Papers. Then they won Pulitzer Prizes and they're considered heroes on the left. Yeah, they, those people were conspiracy theorists. That's why they got that information. They were challenging the government. But now if me and you do that. We're right, right, alt right white supremacists, they said. Well, I do oh, yeah. have a, I do have kind of a qualifier really quick. Sunshine Times asks on, in the chat, "Did we land on the moon? Can we all agree as right wingers that we landed on the moon?" I agree we landed uh, on the moon. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, there you go. But, We're not that I mean, crazy. I can tell, tell Rod, like you're you're probably going to get you know never monetized or fucking banned. So like you know we, we should all be, in my opinion, we should all be just using YouTube as a conduit to get. People to other platforms like BitChute, MindGab, uh, PocketNet. That's a good one. Like that's the only purpose that YouTube should serve is, is a way to get people to other better uh, up and coming platforms. Like I'm not even gonna link YouTube to any of my outside social media platforms anymore. It's all gonna be yeah. BitChute, all Minds, all Gab. Not no Google related platforms. Like I'll still post to YouTube, but it'll just have links in the description to all the better sites that are pro right. uh, free speech and pro freedom. So. I mean, well, there's I'm, an I'm argument tired. for that. Look, there's an argument for that, and I agree, I think, mostly. But uh, Steven Crowder, you know, he's one of the guys hit by all this, and he made, a, I think, a pretty good case that, you know, YouTube, that no matter where you go, the same shit's going to happen. Like, if BitChute gets big, same shit's going to happen. Right. And I, right. I don't disagree. That could, be, that could be. You know, I could see so, that. I guess, you know, I guess it's just like riding waves, you know, like just... Yeah. Hopping to hopping to all these different ones and until they get yeah. crappy, then, you know, just move to the next one, I guess. And then maybe people will finally wake up and realize that freedom of speech and association are important. I don't know. <laughs> maybe that's the way to affect change. Well, unfortunately, well, you, the left. Uh, well, go ahead, Robert. I was just going to say real quick, you look at like some alternatives, like what is, is it? I think it's Gab that they always say, oh, Gab's just full of white supremacists. And they took, I think it was the guy that shot up the synagogue and they said he was on Gab. That shows it was something terrible. Almost every one of these shooters, mass shooters was on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, right. etc. Right. But so why is it only Gab that gets mentioned is, oh, Gab's responsible because they left this guy on. Now, Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, they're not responsible. I mean, it's absurd. Right, right. They're trying to. This is this is the you know this is corporations competing against each other with like mudslinging and lies. Yeah, it's so ugly. And isn't that what this comes down to? Because I think at this point everybody knows that Vox is owned by NBC, and everybody knows that people like Crowder and you know PewDiePie and other big guys. I don't really know that many of them uh, myself, but they're they get bigger reach and they're making uh, are they getting more views than the big guys? So how, and. And of course, the media is not going to cover it that way if they cover it at all. Has it even been a big story? I've been looking around. I haven't seen a lot about it, really. I mean, they're quietly letting their competition be shunned. Well, it's worse than that. They're, most of them are, their reporters are on YouTube, or I'm sorry, on Twitter, supporting this, advocating it. We know Vox is behind it. We see the New York Times is behind it. They, so it's they're either ignoring it or they're outright endorsing banning all these things. Uh, I read an article the other day that some, I think it was someone from the New York Times, she wants to regulate YouTube and other social media sites as broadcast sites. And so things like foul language shouldn't be allowed. And there should be a very tight censorship controlled by the government on, allowed, on what's allowed to be said. Like it used to be back in the day for ABC, NBC, you know, network television. So, I mean, it, it's absolutely 
ridiculous. Anyone with half a brain could see YouTube's making a huge mistake because one of the positives that might come out of this, and I, and I agree with you, Durst, is we might start to see finally enough people say, hey, we're going to go to alternatives. And that free market solution will mean that YouTube's then going to have to quickly backtrack because once it starts to hurt YouTube's pocketbook, when they realize that they have more to lose by being censorious and listening to the left-wing mainstream media, then all of a sudden they'll try to backtrack and be like, no, 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 we're here for you. We, we do like our creators. Creators. I mean, I mean but they're literally this, going after their creators. It's ridiculous. They are. They are. I took a survey today. I don't know if anybody saw that survey. Take it. I took it and let them know, but not that it'll do any good. But, uh, I mean, ultimately, doesn't this come down to the advertisers? I mean, if the advertisers are going to let themselves be manipulated by fake mobs on Twitter and shit, like, <laughs> what? ultimately, uh, a platform like YouTube or any platform is going to be beholden to who's funneling money to them, which is the advertisers. Oh, that's right. Right, because ultimately, yeah, I think, you know, Cheerios or whoever the fuck probably doesn't want their ads to go on like an anti, you know, top 10 reasons why feminism is cancer video, which sucks because there's at least thousands of reasons why feminism but is cancer. But there are advertisers who will. I mean, you know, yeah, when I yeah. was getting ads, I had tons of like PragerU ads and, and stuff like that, and even some Crowder ads and things. So there are people who will buy ads. So that's not really a problem. It's just the problem that. Is we all understand how ads work intuitively. We know it. When you're watching the NFL, right, and, you know, Gillette Razors or Budweiser has a commercial, they're not really saying, hey, we know what was on this program and we endorse it. They're just saying, hey, this program reaches a lot of people. We want well, to get our showing. message out yeah. Right. But that's all advertising is. It's not an endorsement of, you know, I watch Judge Judy and I see an ad for Budweiser. That's not Budweiser endorsing Judge Judy. And so this idea when they say we're going to go after advertisers, because what happens is these censorious left wing people, the progressives and the establishment left, they can't win a civil debate. And so they also can't convince people like us three to shut up. So what's the next step? We'll go after the people that have the power to shut these people up. So we'll go after the advertisers. But the problem is none of these boycotts ever work in the sense that every single time, like look at Chick-fil-A. They went after Chick-fil-A. How'd that work out? Chick-fil-A's stock went through the roof. And I mean, so if the advertisers just realize, dude, they're just running their mouth. They don't have real power. Then all of a sudden they'll realize, wow, we have way more to lose by being controlled by a few left-wing extremists that want to censor everyone than just saying, hey, we advertise with all different political ideologies. We're not endorsing any of them. We just want to get our product out there. That's it. We're like, <laughs> dude, you know, go the way of Dunk Dunkin' Donuts, you know? Donkey. They know what's yep. up. Yep. <laughs> I just, uh, I kind of want to, there was another part of this article I wanted to look at here real quick. They, they go after Joe Rogan. I mentioned that when we were talking earlier. They they mentioned Joe Rogan in the same sentence that they talk about, you know. Uh, and, and I, you know, I like uh, InfoWars and all those guys, personally. I don't have a problem with it. Alex Jones or any of them, really. I don't take Alex Jones 100% seriously. I find him hilarious, personally. But um, let's see here. There was a part of this I actually wanted to talk about. Were they? Oh yeah, here. So <laughs> they have this. They have this little graphic here showing that he's starting out. It's a, it's like a gateway drug. He started out getting right wing content, just regular people, you know, and then he started getting into the intellectual dark web. Now he's into like heroin, and then finally right. he went. Then he went. Finally he went to you know he got help, and now he's watching more left wing channels. And so that's great. Right, it shows. It shows. It also shows a graphic of the crowd, like I'm just a bill, but I like to be Jill, <laughs> and I'm demanding bathroom access at will. Like this is supposed to be like, oh my god, this is gonna radicalize you into what shooting up a synagogue or something because you don't believe that someone with a dong is actually a woman just because they say so. Like that. I know. That's and extremist, really. Yeah, they, and they include they include every, things that we would just think are common sense and don't hurt anybody, and we don't hate anybody, but the, they include all that as if it's conspiratorial nut jobbery. And it, you know what? They don't want to have to argue these points because every time they do, they get destroyed. I mean, that's why we all used to love Milo, right? Because if you go back and you watch his old, old debates, they're actually pretty awesome. But. Yeah. Right, right. You know, but you just... 
Yeah. I was just going to say, there's so many things to talk about this article. One of the things kind of that's going on with that graph in that section where they're getting to the technical aspects and they spend a lot of time talking about algorithms and things like that and how YouTube's changed them. What they're really saying, if you look at this objectively, they're saying right wing people know how to use YouTube better than left wing people. That's it. That's what they're saying. They're making it sound nefarious like, ah, the Dave Rubens, who, by the way, it's not right wing, but the Dave Rubens and the Joe Rogans and the <laughs> Stephen Molinos, they're like sitting in a smoke-filled room saying, yes, we figured out how to scam the system. No, when they talk about the type of things that was being put forth by YouTube, it's in-depth conversations, things that are funny, things that are getting a lot of watch time. So in other words, they're implying that that type of stuff's bad. So instead of a serious in-depth conversation, they just want little bitty sound bites, you know, that's not an in-depth debate or discussion. That's the type of stuff they're saying. They're making it seem like because people that are right wing engaged in that type of stuff, it's necessarily bad. Just right. like the meme stuff, the left can't meme, so memes must be bad. No, exactly. it's just you suck. That's what right. it is, you know? And you know what? I don't endorse hate movements or any of that shit. I'm not a part of that. And we need to distance, distance ourselves from that, which I think we've done. I don't think we ever can because no matter how far we distance ourselves, they're always going to, you know, glom us all together. But, an, you know, another thing I found interesting real quick, Durst and Yingo, is that they they made it look like anybody who questions feminism is a nut job, too. But if you look at the polls, like... A very low percentage of women, I can't remember what it is at the moment, it's a low, actually I, uh, identify themselves as feminists. But they're well, not going to mention mean, that. I, I would say I would say that's like, you know, that's hopeful, but I think that it's also a little bit misleading because, I mean, how many people, how many women that if you ask them, like, you know... Actually know anything gender, about it. Well, well like, I mean, like, not, not just that, but uh, how many women, if you ask them... What, which gender they think has it worse off or, you know, in society that most people would probably say women, like most people, most women would probably say, like respond with a lot of feminist esque talking points, like, but just claim that they're not feminists. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sort of like saying like, I'm not a vegan, but I just don't eat meat or dairy, but I don't consider myself a vegan. You know what I mean? But if you dug into it, they probably buy into a lot of that stuff. Yeah, I think you're probably exactly, right exactly. That. So I think that I think a lot of this stuff is deeply embedded into many, many. I mean, and not just the schools, but you know, your people's Facebook feeds, advertising, movies, video games. Oh yeah. Even now. Oh yeah. I well, have a, a good lot friend. Of it has to do with. Go ahead, oh, go ahead please. Oh, oh, no, I, was I was just, just going to say, say a lot of it has to do again with how you define terms, and so how do you define feminism? I think the truth is this. I think the majority of people, if you ask them, would say, yeah, I think men and women should be treated equally by the law as much as possible. But if you ask it in a way that says something like, do you think that women should always win custody battles? Well, no, I don't think that. Oh, then you're not a feminist. It's the same way with, uh, you see how they view this with polling. I saw one famous example. They'll say, do you think that poor people crossing the border that don't have uh, citizen status right now should be afforded health care and education opportunities? Most people are like, yeah. Then if you say, do you think that your hard-earned tax dollars as a citizen should be going to lawbreakers that refuse to go through legal ports of entry? Well, no, I don't think that. And it's the same question. It's just how you word it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, these a lot of these polls on how many people are feminists or not, it's hard to know. Uh, and things like that. It's hard to know exactly what the truth is. But I do truly believe that most of the radical crap that you see coming from self-proclaimed feminists, I think that's not popular. I think the average person is like, hey, I want equal rights for women, but I'm not down with this all men are evil shit. Yeah, that's why all the people you see that really buy into this shit are like goblins. <laughs> they're, they're people that live in their basements. They're strange people. Right. I would say, though, like, I, I would say that people asserting that women are not equal in America. I, I would consider that to be factually wrong and right. radical in and of itself. You right. know what I mean? Because there's so many ways that women are advantaged by the law. So this this narrative that gets put out there that they're not and that we still need to strive for that, I, I personally, in my, in my opinion, I would consider that radical and I would also consider that most people in society believe in some version of that or another, even if they don't call themselves feminists. So it is, it is sort of, I guess, misleading a lot in a lot of ways, but that, that was an old school Milo contention. Like he was the one who spread the idea that only one in five, you know, in America, women believe in feminism. And I think the UK, the stat was like less than one in 10. Right. But there's no way, like, especially yeah. a place like Britain, 
Britain, it's like it's probably like ninety percent when you get down to all issue issue by issue would probably be you know you could convince them that they were feminists just based on what they believe in you know issue for issue. Yeah. So yeah, what absolutely. are you, Robert? Are you on Bitchute? I don't think I think the only one I'm on other than YouTube is Minds right now. But I literally just started the account like last week and haven't put anything on it. Okay. But I would like to get on all those. And in fact, that's something like Thirst. I know you were talking about. We should see if uh, any of the moderators or anyone could put like a list for everyone to see on the chat of some of these actual sites, so they could. I would like to know more of them myself, so I can check. Yeah, I mean, we should spread out to these sites, and we, those of you who are on Twitter, a lot of you guys have been tweeting out to YouTube, you know, to remonetize my channel. They're probably not going to listen. I do appreciate it. You should do the same thing for for Durst because he he deserves it more than I do. Even I mean, he he really does a lot of hard work. So you should go out there, tweet YouTube, let them know. You know, uh, they're not they're probably not going to do anything, but. Just let them know yeah, you're I mean, out there. Dude, dude, I mean, seeing even like a tiny pittance of, of a little tiny payment on your on your site, I mean, that is, in my opinion, a motivation to go out and do do this. Like, even if yeah. it is just like a side income, even if it just pays for like your coffee or whatever, it still is a motivator to do something with it. You know, yeah, and absolutely. They, they, ultimately, they just want to discourage dissenting voices. And it's such a bummer, like, because it used to not be that way. Yeah, it's too bad. And I, I think, I don't know about you, but I always knew this was where we would end up. I, I just knew it. I knew that it was too good to be true. Like, they would not let it continue. Especially when these big guys started getting more reach than the big NBC TV shows and anchors, you know. They they cannot let that continue. And they won't. Yeah, and we're talking about money, right? Like, uh, with people being able to monetize and money. It's just like, there's a callousness that people that want to shut you up will be like, oh, it's all oh, about yeah. money. No, that's not it at all. It's the same idea that um, comes with filing lawsuit. Like if you're hurt in an accident and you hire an attorney and file a lawsuit, it's not just, oh, I'm greedy and I want money. It's what that money allows you to do. The more money that any of us would be able to get through doing what we like, and spreading this information yes. because people like the information. That means we could do it more. As of right now, like I can't, I don't have any monetization from this. So I have a job where I work 60 hours a week. I would like to be able to do more of this material. The money is the freedom to spread information and your message. And anyone who's callous about that, you have to understand that almost all of them also have a profit motivation. The <laughs> difference is we're not doing it to get wealthy so we can sit in some island drinking pina coladas. We're saying, hey, it would be nice to ha be monetized so I could spend more time doing what I'm passionate about and making yes. more material. Yes, because right, it gives us the freedom to do that. I mean, uh, I'm in a situation now where I have to be home because of our family situation now. But, um, you know, it, I, we definitely need that money. And because the situ you know, we have cars and stuff that we got to pay for that I got back when I was making that money. And so that that's why. And I, I'm going to keep doing this. I have continued doing this. And I, you can, anybody can see my Patreon. I'm not making a lot off that. So, you know, that's not the motivation. So they're just trying to demonize us with that shit. And people are jealous as fuck. Anybody that gets a, a following, they're going to hate you. You're going to have haters out there. So did I wanted to ask about this uh, New York Times article. Is is there a point, like a, a specific chunk that we could point to where they elaborate in detail how this kid got, quote unquote, radicalized and in what way he was radicalized? Well, if I, if I could start with this, the hilarious part is, and we were talking about this before we came on, they can't even do a good job with their propaganda because let's just look at this and take out all of the all right wing and all that. What, this is, it starts off, the first sentence is, he got a gun and he put it on the table. So you read that and you think, oh man, this guy did something really crappy, right? Like, and then they're going to say, oh, he started watching Joe Rogan and then he went to Steven Crowder and all of a sudden right. he's a white supremacist with a gun. No, none of that happened. The worst that the article says he does is, he got in an argument with some old friends because he started to call, he didn't even call, he says specifically this guy, I never bought into any of the white nationalist stuff. I would have considered myself a technical conservative. And they're demonizing right. that, the fact that he considered himself conservative and he argued with old friends that were liberal. That's the horrible tragedy of this. The right. irony is it's solved when he became left-wing again. Finally, now everything's right. better. 
<laughs> right. The, the gun aspect, the gun aspect was uh, upon looking at it, he got the gun because he was getting mean comments on his YouTube for denouncing the uh, the right wing on YouTube. So, um, so, so they're trying to paint a picture like there's all these dangerous chuds on right wing right. YouTube that are trying to trying to kill him or something, and he needs right. the gun. Right. It's all about just making us all look like monsters. I mean, that's all it is. And that's all they've been yeah. doing. And if you look through that, it's like shaming um, YouTube for their algorithm, as if YouTube is trying to help right-wingers get big. And so what's going to be the outcome? Obviously, and this is why I said in the headline that, you know, this is just the beginning, because what they're going to do is just make it so nobody ever sees any of our videos. They'll just be those of us who are still around <laughs> after a year or more of not getting paid to do this anymore. Um that's you're not your videos aren't going to be getting seen anymore either we're just gonna fade away basically i think i hope not but well, my i think that and which that is definitely a possibility i think though that this is a huge mistake on the part of the new york times and the censorious left and the reason is you have to in order for this type of thing to work like look at any time when uh uh government an authoritarian fascist government starts to throw people in jail or things like that. You have to smart with start with small marginalized group. So the Nazis couldn't have thrown, they threw a large swaths of people in jail, right? Or in concentration camps. I need they a good one. I need a, I need a Godwin's law uh, alert right now, but go ahead. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but they could have done that in day one. They needed to start with incremental groups. So, you know, I think they started with like homosexuals and then went on to people with disabilities, etc. And you start incrementally. The problem is, these censors haven't done enough of the groundwork. And so, yeah, they got rid of Alex Jones. And now when you read this New York Times article, the first thing is they have this collage, right? The first words is he got a gun. Alt right. But well, it's just these trigger words meant to like flare up in people's brains. Right wing, alt right, racism, white supremacy, gun. And then all these pictures of the people, Stefan Molyneux, Dave Rubin, Joe Rogan, Philip DeFranco, Milton Friedman. Whoops, ben none Shapiro. of those last four have anything ben to Shapiro do with Ben Shapiro is on there. Ben Shapiro, that's exactly right, who was one of the, and he claims in 2000, which I have no reason to disbelieve him, 2015, he was the leading target of harassment from the alt-right because he's Jewish. And so they just trigger this. They put all that in there to make you think like, all of these people are dangerous. We need to stop all of this. And the problem is you start to see people like Philip DeFranco, who is not right wing whatsoever. He's on Twitter right now saying like, whoa, what the hell is this? Why are you putting my picture next to David Duke and talking about how people get radicalized and buy guns and become white supremacists? And the author of the story from the New York Times responded, oh, my bad. They just put a montage together, a collage of all the people that he had watched. Right. But your entire article is everyone that he watched led to this radicalization. So they, he is saying, and you know, maybe he's just implying it, but he's saying, yes, part of this radicalization was Philip DeFranco. And it, 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 or was Dave Rubin or was Joe Rogan. And the problem they're going to have is they're biting off more than they could chew because these people would traditionally be more left-wing type people, people like the intellectual dark web, people like Eric Weinstein, uh, Brett yeah. Weinstein, uh, all these people. And they're on Twitter right now being like, what the hell is going on? We need to fight back against this censorship. So my hope is the positive outcome would be they bit off more than they could chew and now that it's going to backfire tremendously. I Man, hope that talk, happens. You're talking about psychotic fucking radicals. I was I just remembered today I was messed with by a, a fucking uh, fat queefy fucking uh, hipster on the street today, actually. And then it was you it's know in video? connection to my it's in connection to my YouTube page. I just remembered this. I was just walking to the grocery store and uh, this like hubby soy boy looking dude um, asked me if I was Durst. And I said yeah, and he basically just said yeah we're gonna. We're gonna do some late term abortions. You want one? And he's just like this snooty little bastard, like talking shit to me as I'm oh, going God to the Lord. grocery store. And this is all this is all for, for you know my YouTube presence. He's yeah. trying to and, and so to me that shit is radical. Like even you know like and he's not he's probably not even like half joking. He probably thinks that it's like every woman's right to get a late term abortion. Like if you really delve into it, this dude. He probably I mean, believes killing what, the baby is okay, like after it's born. Yeah. Well, here's what gets me, right? This is what I've always said. I don't care if people make fun of me and insult me. I mean, obviously, threats and doxing, that's bad. 
But all I ask is, if you're going to make fun of me, at least have it be funny. Have it be original. Right. They can't even do that. Their right, shit's so pathetic. That. It's like, what What are you doing? You're sitting it's around so angry at Durst's YouTube channel. You're like, ooh, if I ever see this guy, I'm going to let him have it. And then that's the best you can come up with? Please, you know? Yeah, I mean, there's it's it's insane. Like, I, I do live in a really lefty town, and, you know, it's it, – I do occasionally, you know, sometimes people are fans and other times, you know, they're, they're crap talkers, but they, the crap talkers can never, I mean, the, the left can't meme is, is a dead meme at this point. It's been said so many freaking times, but it's so it's, true. Yeah. Like it's late, just... term ab- dude, late term abortions. Do you want one? It's like, this guy was like some, you know, like the he- sides of his head were all shaved. And he had that stupid, like little hipster quaff, like, and he was like some chubby, like, oh, and he was, and he had like a pack of like, you know, craft micro brew, and he was sitting there with like gender ambiguous, uh, either BF, uh, GF, or whatever the fuck she was. It was insane. You should contact that man. Contact and I, that I, I wish I had my, I wish I had my camera rolling. I wish I could have. I was kicking my yeah, phone seriously. Out of my camera rolling. You but, had yourself. Uh, but that's, just, but that's just it. Like that's that's what I. I mean, I hate to sound like a martyr or anything, but that's what I'm putting myself in the way of is getting fucked with just just for a, like a pittance of ad revenue, and then they take that shit away. It's such a you know, it's such a bummer. Dude. Yeah, dude. The night the night that I lost my monetization, I started getting threats on Facebook and on uh, in the YouTube chat from people who called themselves Antifa members who start threatening me and my family. And so, yeah, I understand. The, and the threats are never cool. Like, physical threats and doxing, that's different. The joking and stuff. So both of you have been, as myself as well, but probably both of you more than me, have had jokes and insults hurled at you. Just a quick question. Have either of you contacted YouTube to censor anyone? Is that well, is that on not. your agendas? Oh, <laughs> hell no. Fuck it. I exactly. don't give a shit. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely not. What I would, again, what I would rather do is just attempt to document it and make them look stupid. And, and But that's just it. Like, in, in order to catch, like, the handful of times I've been messed like, the Brood Cafe instance comes to mind. If anybody's watched my channel, uh, this was, like, two or so years ago, the – the cafe in my neighborhood, like one of the employees was standing outside and yelled some bullshit at me from across the street. And I recorded the altercation and got, you know, the, the cafe kind of in hot water on Yelp and on Google ratings and stuff. And it was a big hullabaloo, but I, I mean, I just don't want to have to like leave my house, like, like, like keep a, a body cam rolling every time I leave my house. Like what kind of way is that to live for again, for no ad revenue whatsoever. Right. But I mean, right. I, I, I I still want to do this. I still want to document protests and social events and debates and stuff like that. I You'll think still really do fun. it. <laughs> it's important and it's I'm passionate about it and I learn a lot from it, you know, and it's but, good. You know, and we like it. Just, you you are, got a fan base. Fucking, these guys are just, they're emotionally abusive people and they accuse us of being that, which is just the ultimate form of Saul Alinsky style gaslighting tactics. And it's just what? utterly despicable to me. Here's yeah, the uh, oh, he, real quick. Ahead, here's please. the threats I got. Just so y'all know, I wasn't BSing. Oh, that's not who we want to watch. I don't know. I can zoom in here. Here we go. I, I won't just see the guy's name there, but uh, yeah, you can see that's what I got. That literally, I started getting that shit in Facebook the night that my monetization got taken away, which r- literally happened right as Trump began the State of the Union. Yeah. Tell me that wasn't fucking coordinated. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> one of the th- like, I was, uh, I was on. I did a little video with you, and we were going to do one later, and you were like, yeah, whatever. I'm demonized. Yeah. You were so <laughs> busy pissed. fighting stuff. It was like, I was yeah, pissed. I mean, it's yeah. ridiculous. And then uh, that happened. On, yeah. on this note, like talking about kind of like uh, their double standards and like how extreme they are, keep in mind, one of the things we haven't talked about, right? The New York Times, the, the kind of the uh, hook of the story is this. He was radical. This because it's focused on. For those of you who haven't read this story, it's focused on one person who was radicalized by the alt right and did horrible things like admitting he never became a racist and having an argument with his friends. But then it all turned around when he started following liberals on YouTube. And right. the liberals they cite, they're call they call themselves bread tube. And the New York Times actually says this. It says bread comes from an anarchist, an anarchist from the 1800s. And so I looked into it briefly, and here's someone who's right. yeah. overthrowing, uh, that's advocating the overthrow of civilization and going to a complete anarchist system. So <laughs> New York Times wants you to believe 
that this guy watching Joe Rogan was radical, but now he's unradicalized by listening to violent anarchists that want to overthrow the government. Right. One How of them, I think, was does uh, that make it all? Yeah, they it's, call it's, it that. They call it that because uh, there's a, I believe, an anarchist book called The Quest for Bread. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what it's called. Um, yeah, that's why they call it that. And uh, no, this is a, this is another Saul Alinsky tactic. Um, they, you know, a, a lot of these lefty creators and, and blue check marks call us grifters. Like that's their term for us, grifters. But this entire thing is one big grift, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, this is like, this is uh, this guy is. I, I'm pretty sure I've seen this kid's YouTube channel, and that's that's what he got all the mean comments from. Is he, he did a video talking about how he used to be radicalized, and then he came over to watch ContraPoints, and now he's not radicalized anymore. And of course, he never explained how he was radicalized, etc. That that is the grift right there. That right. is the grift. Yeah, like what proof you know? do we have of anything this guy is saying? Like, how do we know he just isn't a left winger bullshitting? Like, it's yeah, just... Carlos, Ma, the Mazas of the world. That is the ultimate grift to get like billions of dollars or whatever in corporate NBC money. That yeah, is really. the grift. The bash right. white dudes, you know, in a, in a trendy manner. It's uh, it's all projection. Yeah, but uh, I'm gonna. I want to. I'm sending. I think I'm sending this to you. There's screen caps on my Facebook here of uh, some PMs I've gotten, DMs I've gotten from this like crazy old granny, who like it seemed like she's hitting on me. I don't know. If, I don't know if you can access what I just sent. You. I'm looking. Yeah, I'm uh, looking. It's uh, uh, she seems the like gay she sex convention. Like what? Hold on, I'm getting it over here. Is this it? Uh, I'm a little bit on a delay on the yeah. thing here. Well, yeah, I think it's just your page. Which, by the way, folks, go ahead and uh, go. Even though fuck Facebook too, but might as well go sign up there as well. Oh yeah, again, yeah. it's just all going to be a conduit. All of these mainstream corporate platforms are going to be a conduit to, for me to get people over to. Uh, yep, there it is. I see it now. So yeah, um, I was commenting on the straight pride parade troll, and then I've been inundated with these messages from these psycho fucking pussy hat bedecked retards telling me like, you, you can see some of the screen caps. She she like suck a cock for Jesus, and I just made an AIDS joke, and then she just she starts in with like all this insane crap. Like she's ranting and raving at me like someone who's just <laughs> like a wine and pill addled granny. I call yeah. her that somewhere in there. Like, <laughs> she, she, make, she makes has, like, makes weird... hysteronic drug out on leftist psychos like yourself freak out over nothing in front of cameras so everyone could laugh. <laughs> yeah, that's the, in my opinion, from where I'm standing, that's the point of the straight pride parade is to get these people who are predictably going to freak totally. out and come out and everybody's going to bust their cameras out and yeah, it'll just be a big, it'll be a big, you know, YouTube gold rush. Yeah, basically. it's like going to to campus with a it's okay to be white sign and just bust out your camera. Right, right. Right. It's the exact same point of it's okay to be white, to get them to reveal to the world that they indeed have a problem with being white. Right. They, they, Which they we all know they do. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then you get them to try to explain that and they either realize they're an idiot or they, you know, act out, latch out. Well, they, they, they either like act out like emotionally or swing on you or a lot, a lot more often, I, in my experience, they just kind of glaze their eyes over and stare off into space and act like they're ignoring you. But I think maybe they are ignoring you, but they also just have no, they're static in their brain, basically. None of these people, and one thing like, that one thing that I notice, and this is, I, I hate to do it because they do it and I hate it, but it's a broad generalization. But from what I see on YouTube and from what I've encountered personally, these people don't do much thinking at all. They do a lot of feeling, and even that is questionable as fuck. But yeah, they, they don't do much thinking at all. And when you present things to them, that to you is just like second nature. Like you hear, your brain just goes there. Their brain has never even considered it. And that's when usually you'll, they'll run away, try to escape or something. Well, yes, on, on, on that note, like, so I think all three of us would agree this guilt by association fallacy that's saying, ah, it turns out that people that end up being extreme watched Joe Rogan in the past. Well, is Joe Rogan advocating that extremism? No, then we can't blame it on him. I think right. we all agree with that. Right. But if we're going to accept the premise that the New York Times article is going with that says that we should do that, let's look at the impact of exactly who we're looking at, who's YouTube uh, viewing history then. 
Their article listens to Kane, someone who said that he became basically alt light, wasn't a racist, wasn't really alt right, had arguments with friends, and now he's left wings. Why don't they look into like the YouTube history of that woman that just stabbed herself ten times because she hates Trump, or the guy that lit himself on fire they in never front of the White that. House? Yep. Hmm. Why don't let's see what they were watching? Do you think it was Steven Crowder, or do you think it was the Young Turks and BreadTube and all these left wing people? Now they right. would say, if, and they would be right to say, well, wait, you can't blame the Young Turks for some psycho lighting himself on fire. That's true, you can't. But that's exactly what they're doing here when it comes to the right. That's how right. stupid it is. Right. And that's, I mean, exactly. exactly that. And it, look, it's people like us that are out there letting people know when the media may, does that, those sorts of things. And so that's part, again, to circle back on it. That's why we're here today talking. That's why we're, that's why this topic has been the topic the last half of the week here. Um, and I want to go ahead and try to wrap this up guys. Cause we've been going for about an hour. Uh, I want to get everybody over to Durst bit shoot, uh, to all of his other channels, which we've been linking in the chat. So just scroll through there. You should be able to find them. And, um, and mine as well, my bit shoot and, uh, just start moving into Roberts when he gets it going or to, I believe you said you're on mines, right? Robert. I think so. Yes. So get on, get on mine. just start getting on these other channels because who knows how long we're going to be around. I would say the days are numbered honestly and uh right so it's it start to it's it's time to start migrating off of youtube it's become a gulag it's become you know a tyranny basically so we got to get out did they, <laughs> we gotta uh, emigrate. Did they say exactly when they're going to start like flat out like the, the rumor is that they're going to ban thousands of channels not just you know flat out demonetize them but just ban them right like, i think they only banned like three like uh farg and then uh whoever else but uh i sincerely hope that i'm not on the chopping block for that one before i have a chance to you know because i'm only i'm approaching the big 100 on a bit shoot which is a right. milestone you know yeah, I, I may I, have actually I, hit I, it you I, yeah you may have actually been my hundredth tonight i think you were so yeah hell yeah dude but yeah i mean everyone should check out our patreon subscribe stars and other that's an up-and-coming anti-censorship platform i'm on there subscribestar.com slash there's the worst just search, search for me, Durst the word, Duers the worst. And you'll find me. It'll, it'll be, it'll be a party. So. And he's highly entertaining. I, I highly recommend you get on YouTube right now, since that's where all this stuff is. Check out his videos. They are highly entertaining. I love them. And I want, I yeah, want him to keep, I want him to keep doing this stuff. There's like 600 on there, and I don't know. It's, it's difficult for me to keep track of, you know, which or if any of them are getting removed like I don't, i'm not sure if they're gonna have a notification in the email to tell me that they were removed like it's all so vague it's all so cryptic right and so, I, I do want to say uh, yeah and i do i do want to say here real quick yeah i actually downloaded my entire thing before i deleted 1200 videos but um that on the uh questionnaire it really focused on that a lot a lot a lot on um just uh like communication and knowing what's going on and that sort of thing. So I thought that was interesting. But I don't think anything's going to change in our favor. But anyway, uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. Thanks, Robert uh, and Durst. You guys are, are uh, A-plus content as far as I'm concerned. And uh, you should be supported and encouraged, which is why I, I do that. And you guys come on here and help me because if it was just me on here talking, how interesting is that? And uh, I, like I said, I really appreciate you guys. And once more, not to sound like a broken record, but it, it's so good that we're all working together. We all need to work together more, uh, those of us who are you know like-minded, uh, because uh, you know there's security in numbers and there's there's force in numbers. Even though we're all you know lower, smaller channels right now, you know, in, in a year that could be different. But uh, hopefully, it's on a on a different platform at this point. <laughs> So uh, thanks, everybody, for coming, and uh, we will do this again next Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Thank you. See ya. Word. Take it easy, y'all.